time for history with Hebert. But today I wanted to talk about Aberdeen Castle. Not that. That's not a castle. That's a Salvation Army Citadel. Who knew they had citadels? I mean, seriously, I thought they just had thrift shops and inspired Macklemore and, you know, were kind of smelled funny, but they were good. But they have citadels, and that's one. But underneath that citadel is the exact spot where Aberdeen Castle used to stand. Well, according to most of my sources, uh, one or two sources said that it was the the block of flats over there. Um, Aberdeen Castle. Nobody really knows what it looked like. Um, nobody really knows who built it. Nobody really knows when it was built. It was kind of, you know, we don't know much. I'll tell you why in a minute. But we think it was built sometime in the mid 1200s. Sometime, don't really, some noble guy, probably, with a bunch of money, built it. What we do know is that, that in 1295, oh, 1295, we have my handy dandy fact sheet. Handed over to Edward I, the English dude. And he came to stay for a while on his nana nana boo boo I beat you Scottish people tour. We didn't really like him. Um, and then, in 1297, William Wallace came to town. Well, first, he came to Dunnater Castle. And I'm not pronouncing that right, but it's like, the Scottish people say like, Dunnater, and I, I just, I, that was really bad. So I'm just gonna say Dunnater, because that's how it's spelled. So William Wallace came up to Dunnater Castle and completely, like, rooted out all of the English people and won a big battle there and it was very exciting for like freedom and stuff. Okay, Dunnetter Castle, I should have explained this. It's about 15 miles south on the coast. And so the people in Aberdeen, the official English people, were very worried and they started getting ready this fleet of 100 ships to go and get William Wallace out of Dunnetter. Little did they know, he was already marching up the coast because he's a major keener and caught them by surprise. The ships weren't ready, they weren't ready, and most importantly, he caught them at low tide. So all of the ships were sitting there stranded in the bay because they were just like sitting there. There's no water because the tide was out. And so they went and they massacred everybody in the ships. They just went and just killed them all. And, oh, disclaimer, Braveheart, while it is a lovely movie and it is very patriotic and stuff, it's about as historically accurate as an epic rap battle. Okay, people? It's not, he wasn't fighting for Robert the Bruce. Robert Bruce comes later. He was fighting for King John de Balliol. De Balliol. Balliol. Scottish guy. The, the Scottish people had anointed king, but the English refused to recognize because Scotland was overrun by English people. So the Scottish Wars of Independence at that point were about John de Balliol, not freedom in general. Okay, so now that's disclaimed. So Wallace is killing people in the bay, having a good old time, and the sheriff, the English sheriff, is sitting in the castle and watching all of these angry Scottish people come and storm the outer walls of his castle, and suddenly he has a revelation. John de Balliol is the best king ever. What was he thinking, you know? It was just, he suddenly became very patriotic. So he got to keep his head, and the Scottish people got the castle which was very fun for everybody. Then, after that, my internet research wasn't exactly able to figure out what happened to the castle for a good 10 years. Um, it went over back to the English. It wasn't entirely clear as to how or when. I'm pretty sure there is a how and when, I just wasn't on the right sites. But um, it got over to the hands of the English probably by a lord being bribed, or the English coming and taking it by force, one of the two, pretty common in the Wars of Independence. Um, William Wallace got 
murdered pretty badly, ripped to pieces and mailed throughout the, the island. 1308, Robert the Bruce comes along and he really gives the Aberdonians a very rousing speech and they all become very angry and go up to storm the castle. Bon Accord is the city's motto. It's French for a good agreement. Apparently, legend has it, that is the secret password that Robert the Bruce used to initiate the final push to the castle. So they pushed to the castle and they murdered everybody. Just, like, they didn't even save, like, anybody, like, kitchen servants, or they just killed everybody. And the historical resource that I was looking at was like, but they were justified because Edward I killed his prisoners first. But at that point, it was Edward II. But anyways, there was just a lot of murder happening at that point in time, though. He was very excited because he was murdering everybody and winning back the kingdom and stuff. And then one of the people he was murdering was like, ah, you're just a big nincompoop. And then he killed him. Then there was another guy who insulted his mother, so he killed him. And then there was another guy who said his hat was weird. And he got very angry and burnt the entire castle to the ground. So now there's no, uh, there's no Aberdeen Castle left because he couldn't take it. That may have been ad-libbing. So that is the end of my story. Goodbye!